So go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to uh, our three followers. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Kyle uh, Howarth. Uh, I live in Australia, Western Australia, so pretty isolated of Australia. Um, I've been arm wrestling for must be close to 10 years now. Nice. Um, I would say the first whoa, probably three or four years wasn't real proper. We had no idea what we were doing. Um, it was kind of just get to training and just smash sideways and that was it. Go home sore as, but yeah, probably the last probably the last five, six years, it's really started to kind of step up and we've had obviously Devin come out and all those guys sort of sort of steered us in the right direction. And yeah. yeah, so it's getting quite good now in Australia. It's yeah, really picking up. Now, being from Australia, do you guys view Ryan Bowen as like a great thing for Australia? Or like, how does that, how's, um, how's like, in America, it's like 50-50, like, People either love them or hate them. It's probably pretty similar in Australia. You've always got got the yeah. haters, but right. I mean, I, I think Ryan's great. I mean, I, I'm would say I'm friends with him. I've obviously he's come over here, and right. I've been over there, and yeah. I mean, I don't have any problems with the guy. I mean, um, he's always been like that from the start. I, I've probably pretty sure I'd probably be in his first sort of 100 followers, um, and yeah, he's always kind of been been that way so yeah i don't really see anything different he's just more people are yeah viewing him now and having more opinions on him so right but no, i think he's great for the sport the things oh, yeah. that he does and, yeah, absolutely I mean, you can hate him as much as you want but yeah i think he's done some good things for the sport so there's a lot of jealousy too i think because 100%. he's the first one to turn it into a career you know yeah, yeah absolutely yeah so but yeah, I, love, I think he, he does a lot of good things. And I think he purposely pushes buttons because he knows that the haters are also viewers. Oh, you know? yeah, that's it. So he's not stupid. You know? uh, yeah, <laughs> he, he, might be more. he might get more viewers from the hate, more right. views from hate. So, yeah. Yeah. But no, I don't have any problems with him. Yeah. That's cool. Jake Ward, too, is is, you know great for the sport too i think uh he's doing a lot of great things and it's it's a good representation of two great guys coming out of australia doing big things over there yeah it's good it sort of puts australia on the map a little bit i think yeah if we didn't have those guys people still wouldn't have a clue who we are so it's kind yeah. of a good ride especially ryan I mean, he obviously yeah shows off a lot of australian arm wrestlers and talks about how good they are and that kind of stuff so yeah. The, the other guys I love as well are the Mario and Andy show. Oh yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if you listen. I mean, they talk a lot about a lot of things that are happening in Australia. So yeah, yeah I, I really enjoy listening to those guys. They're entertaining. Now, now where you're at in Australia, are you having to deal with all the craziness with like being shut down and COVID, and you see riots in the news and stuff? <laughs> my state's not that bad um my state locked down almost as soon as there's a case we just shut everybody out so yeah. we've actually been good that we've had almost no covid come in but we just don't allow anybody to come in and same thing i can't really travel right now because i could potentially get locked out so it's oh. yeah. so if you leave the area you could get locked out of your own state if yeah, pretty yeah. much. So if I left and there was even a single case somewhere, I might have to either not come back in, or if I come in, I'd have to pay for hotel quarantine. quarantine. Yeah. Weeks, so wow. It just as becomes as, way, way too risky. As long as you yeah. stay within the state, though, from what I'm hearing, you are able to get out about and actually do some pulling. Uh, because what we're hearing is that uh, all of the, like the New South Wales and Victoria, especially that. Uh, only allowed to leave their home for so many hours, only allowed to be so many kilometers from home and so forth and so on. So what you're saying that really, as long as you stay in Western Australia, that really is not hitting you as hard. No, I'm free to do, we can travel around the whole of Western Australia. And luckily Western Australia is a really good state. There's yeah, so many nice places to go on holiday in. And so it's, it's not been too bad really. It's just getting to comps is, is really the challenge. Yeah. yeah. Well, you are only about one third of the continent, so I guess you do have a uh, nice variety of everything out there. It's great. 
So how how did you get into making handles? Um, so again, where I live, um, <laughs> start there wasn't really a lot of other guys around me. So my closest sort of training partner would be sort of over an hour's drive away. Um, so yeah, my training at home just I don't know. I, I'm obviously done all the bands and use belts and things like that, but I just thought they were just lacking a bit and. Yeah, I just wanted something that would hit my hand and my arm in multiple ways and just feel a bit more realistic the way you hold it. So, yeah, basically, it started out as an arm. So there's actually a whole arm for that handle. Nice. Um, but as it sort of developed, I just figured the arm sort of became not as useful and I found it was almost better without it. You could kind of make it hit better things without having this locked sort of position yeah um, and yeah basically it started as a 3d print so i've got i don't know probably like 60 different designs that i 3d printed before i sort of settled on that one um, and took it to a proper company that do molds and plastic stuff yeah and basically got them to make it how it is now so i happen to have one right here well, you probably uh, yeah. can't see. You probably can't see it, but oh yeah, yeah. Okay. dude, I love this thing. I think it's yeah. great, and yeah, it no, and it comes it. it comes with some straps and stuff, which I thought was yeah, pretty cool. The, the straps are a must because, again, they give you all the fine adjustments. So if you were using it without straps and you can't adjust pressures where you want them to be, it yeah. really isn't anywhere near as good as when you can and i mean you can have i send it out with three straps because i find that's a decent amount but yeah. sometimes i have four or five on it depending on what i'm doing so yeah, and i've seen some of your videos with bands and you know whatever you got to do to get the right pressure and oh yeah i go pretty crazy cool. sometimes yeah. you kind of just got to think i always just sort of say to people just kind of hold the hand and, and make it do the move that someone might be doing to you. And then you can kind of work out where you want those pressures to be and then just start hooking different things on. And yeah, you, you find you can replicate things pretty close. Like it's obviously nothing's perfect, but yeah, yeah. I think it, it hits it pretty close. So Yeah. Uh, uh, Lachlan had a video recently using it, doing some, uh, some wrist curls with it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's probably one of my favorite exercises. Just, just the straight wrist curl with it. Yeah. Just the way it tries to peel your fingers back. It, yeah. I mean, it it's feels really, really good in the hand. Like when I grip it up, it's like. Now wait, is this your hand? It's modeled <laughs> off my hand, so yeah. it's not my actual hand, but right, right. It's pretty much the size of my hand. I took yeah. the dimensions of my hand and pretty much right. yeah, made it like that. So. But it is um, really. It is tweaks. really comfortable you know yeah you now, obviously obviously uh with spacing and things like that it was kind of that i had to make the thumb space probably uh, i mean it might i don't know what your thumb's like it's pretty good for mine but yeah you get some guys with smaller hands and it's probably a little bit big but at the same time you couldn't yeah to make it suit everybody yeah you kind of had to go to that middle point and i mean it feels it feels pretty good for me, but it, I mean, it feel, it's if like that space is big enough where it feels like even someone with a bigger thumb than me would be okay in there. Yeah, well, that's, that? again, I tested it with a few of the big super heavyweights that we've got, and um, like Ben Carroll, and I don't know if you know yeah. much about him. Ben's a beast, but yeah, he was right. the same. He could, it was comfortable, so I thought, oh, that, that's the size I'm going to go with. And, and it makes it easy to put, apply the strap to. I don't know if you use it for strap pulling much. Um, I haven't tried yet, but I would imagine it would be, it would feel really good, like set up that way. It's good. And, yeah. and that's the other thing I love about it. Um, you do the strap pulling in it and you can see why the strap makes such a big difference because something you might be struggling with outside of the strap, you put the strap on suddenly it's like, oh, geez, this is yeah, yeah. nothing. Right, right. Are you considering making a left-handed one? Yeah, so I'm in talks with that company now because getting the mold set up is the most expensive part of the whole thing. Um, yeah. 
it's basically like a big two-piece mold that's made out of metal. So it gets machine cut. Um, and then, yeah, basically they join them all together with all those eye bolts coming yeah. out of it and right. inject that plastic into it. So that's actually made out of the same stuff roller skate wheels are made out of. Oh, nice. So that, that gets injected into this mold and then, yeah, you've got to wait sort of three, four hours for it to dry and then they can crack the case off and basically go ahead and do another one. So that's cool. So it's a bit of a slow process, but yeah, yeah, they come out pretty good. I mean, they're getting better at it as well. Obviously, when I took it to them, they were like, oh, geez, this is way, way different than anything we've ever done. So <laughs> yeah, they were pretty <laughs> smart talking to them about it and I bet they were like, wait, what? You want what? <laughs> a hand? Oh, yeah. no, so. I've got some other ideas as well. So I wouldn't mind getting it. Eventually, it's just all money. Everything costs money. So Absolutely. Yeah, eventually, like I said, I've got a few other ideas floating around that I'd love to sort of get made a bit more professionally. And Yeah. Well, they got mainly multi-use handles. So I don't like, I mean, I've got a lot of handles, but I kind of hate the fact that I've got 50 different handles for doing 50 different movements. Yeah. So I like to like slim it all down. I think my handle, you can almost do everything with it. Um, there's certain real heavy movements that I don't do with it. I still prefer to do real, real heavy ones with like a belt or something yeah. like that. It's just, yeah, more comfortable. Uh, you can isolate it a bit more, but yeah, I hate having a hundred different handles. So I just, yeah, would love to bring out a couple of handles that can almost do everything. Yeah. Especially going on holidays as well. You can kind of pack it in your bag and right. take it with you and still get a decent workout. Oh, yeah. So so the mold is actually machine made, but then once you have the mold, is that something that you are then able to insert the material yourself or is that something that they're done in a factory? No, so they do all that because, again, it has to be injected while it's hot. Oh. Um it's injected with pressure. So hmm. basically I took my 3D print to the, and the 3D print worked exactly the same. It was just a little bit set up differently, but it essentially worked the same. But yeah, they kind of looked at the 3D print and what I had done with it and said, oh, well, if we do this, um, basically incorporating all those eye bolts into the hand, the way they come out and all that. Um, yeah, basically it, it reduced what I had to do. And it made a better product, so I was pretty happy for him to go ahead and yeah, see what it was like. And it's not like it does not feel like a cheap, lightweight handle. Like this thing is sturdy. It's heavy. No, and that, it's the heavy. material that it's made out of per kilo costs. It's more expensive than steel. So. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it feels rugged. You know, like you you know you're not going to break this thing. Yeah, and that's what I wanted. Right? Sorry. You can... Uh, skate wheels aren't cheap, so I guarantee you that they're that's yeah. polyurethane or whatever it's made out of. It's, it's expensive. I've actually the first one they sent me out basically to test it and make sure that it, I'm happy with it and how it feels and all that. It's like a light green color, and it, you can see through it, so you can actually see that the big metal plate that's in there that all those eye bolts are welded to. Yeah. Um, and the first thing I thought when I got it and felt the weight in it, I was like, oh, geez, this is like, they were like yeah. worried it was too heavy. And I was like, nah, this is good. Like it yeah. feels what I want. It feels yeah, proper. Solid. Like, yeah. solid. Yeah, for sure. I, I like the feel of it. And yeah, so far all the feedback's been really good. So like I said, I'm hoping, hopefully COVID kind of settles down soon and can sort of speed things up a little bit and I can bring out a left and yeah. that would be nice. Have you sold many of these in the States yet? Um, I've sold them all over the place, to be honest. They, I mean, I just shipped one to Mos Moscow or Mos Moscow nice. the other day. That's cool. Uh, one to Italy. So, yeah, it's sort of getting out there. And yeah. So, I didn't even know. Obviously, the 3D print started for me, and I used that for probably close to a year and a half. And then I thought, I was happy with it, but I thought, oh, geez, I'd love to just make this just, just a bit better. And the problem with the 3D print as well, the thumb obviously is solid, whereas I don't know if you notice on that, that the thumb actually has a little bit of flex to it. So Yeah, I was actually just, just, little, I was just flexing that. I was like, oh, the thumb yeah. moves a little, yeah. It makes it a little bit easier to, to do certain movements just for having yeah. a little bit of a flex on it. So the 3D print is so rigid and 
yeah, I don't know. I just I just wanted it to be better. So I mean, yeah. if this if this doesn't work out, you could put the fingers on it and then l- sell lube with it. <laughs> and you got a, a whole just, different just, kind of handle. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh, just call, close, it purpose. Close or... call it the stranger because it's not your hand <laughs> <laughs> no and but again, I, I like I it man do you, do you like I mean obviously I played around with, with fingers being on the hand everything and I just found having anything that sort of closed over the top of your hand just made it way more restrictive because all of a sudden you never really have to hold on to this thing right. because it was holding on to you so Basically, yeah. I stripped all the fingers off of it, and as soon as I done it, I was like, "Oh, this is way, way better." Yeah. So. Yeah. Plus, I, I can see like when 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 you're moving it around, like not having fingers there, like they're not going to get in the way or hit your arm or anything, you know. Yeah. No, I I thought it worked a lot better. And- but it's it's amazing, like taking an attachment from here to here or here makes such a big difference in the pressures that you feel that you can almost mimic any kind of movement you're trying to, uh, you know, train. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to go with. Again, I think if you're going against somebody and you know their style pretty well, you can really focus down and and try to replicate that, what you're going to feel on the table with it. And yeah, I think you go into a match sort of probably more confident because you've been sort of getting those pressures put on you for the last yeah. however long you've been prepping for three, six months. What what weight class do you pull at? Uh, right now I'm the heaviest I've ever been and I'm I'm about 90 kilos. Um, mm-hmm. But I, for the WAL in, I think it was 2017, I, I was in Vegas for that and I pulled at 74. So normally I'm around 80, so... Yeah, I think just with COVID being around, I've been a little bit lazy on the diet and stuff like that. So yeah. my weight's kind of blown up a little bit. But, right. But ideally, yeah, I, I would probably compete at about 85 now. I think I don't think I'd want to get much lighter than that. Yeah. Uh, of course, these are not ordinary times, but during more ordinary times, as as isolated as you are out there in Perth, uh, do you did you have to? really travel outside the state for competition or did you could you get a decent number of uh you know tournaments uh within you know reasonable distance of you um yeah they're, they're popping up a bit more i mean wa we we sort of probably we have the main state comp and then yeah some of the down south guys put on a yeah one or two comps a year so there's not really a lot in wa so you kind of have to travel for it and yeah. again that's been the problem for me. Traveling from WA to anywhere else is actually the most expensive flight in Australia. So yeah. it all of a sudden starts to become very expensive to go do some traveling. So that's one thing I would definitely like to do a bit more of. Um, and then COVID hit and kind of yeah, stuffed all that up. So yeah. yeah, hopefully once it opens up and I can get out a bit more. And I, I've been training really hard for probably the last yeah, two years two three years but i just can't get out so it's it's been a bit of a pain yeah yeah we're we're very fortunate here in that uh in the mid-atlantic states and that we have uh really competitions out the wazoo and it seems that everybody and their brother is trying to catch up on you know having missed out for a year and in fact uh over the next uh let's see over the next six weeks there is actually a competition uh five of the six weeks within driving distance of Eastern Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's basically it's maybe stretching a little bit. Uh, the, in fact, the only one that really is, a, a, is an overnight is uh, the New England states, which is probably, oh, about five or six hours from me. But uh, all the others are, you know, considerably closer than that. Yeah, so, we, we live in a very busy arm wrestling area. So, you know, a lot of... Great for progression. It's good for us. Yeah, right. It is. It really is. We don't realize how fortunate we are until we realize there's people that have two tournaments within striking distance that they have to travel to a year. Yeah, that's like, wow. Not very and helpful. what um, sort of big name pullers do you have that are close to you guys? Uh, Paul Lynn lives right here in our state. Um, RVJ is not far. Dave Chafee lives here. Storm Cholino. Sam, Har- Sam Harris. Marcio <laughs> Barbosa. Uh, Jason Merlot. <laughs> like, there's, a, there's a lot of people right around us. Um, yeah, see, I mean, where I am, I pretty much, 
sort of the main guy you'd probably know would be Ben Carroll. So he's he's yeah. sort of my regular training partner. Um, oh, that's that's a good tr- partner. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. compared to what you've got, you've got such a huge variety. It's yeah, <laughs> just feeling those different hands and stuff makes a big difference in your progression. I think so. Yeah. So we expect that uh, we're going to be running a our large tournament in March. And we expect, especially in the lightweights, we probably have will have one of the more stacked lightweight classes, and uh, you know, in any tournament recently. I mean, a good half dozen of uh, you know people that uh, you know some names that you would know, and some names that you possibly would not. But uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll really have a uh, we'll have a real crowd. Because where we live in Philly, like New York City, is like two hours north of us. Baltimore is two hours south. Harrisburg is two hours west where Paul Lynn and all them are. So we're like right in the center. We're like the hub of our little area. Yeah. So it actually works out good for us. But, you know, you don't realize how fortunate you are because like Josh was saying, um, you know, some areas of the United States maybe get like one or two tournaments a year that are within distance, uh, you know, without having to take a flight or something. So yeah. we have so, but also it, sometimes it's like, man, there's a tournament every weekend for a oh, few months and it gets right. saturated, you know? But And do many of these tournaments have sort of any prize money attached to them or is it? Is some do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it depends. Lot. It depends on, on the tournament and stuff, you know, like Travis throws a lot of stuff nearby and him and Paul Italia, you know, put money up to get guys like, or zinc and you know so and you're, you're looking at maybe making a thousand if you win the whole thing you know you're not yeah. walking out of there with 10 grand except for this crazy thing that's going on in orlando this weekend but you know it's, not, kind of, it's, it's pretty hard to make a living just arm wrestling no it's relatively rare the vast majority of them i would say are you know trophies or medals uh there is a group in uh ohio south southern ohio called stump crew that uh, does their, I think they call it payday, you know, something or other. And there they have, you know, several hundred here, there, whatever. But uh, I would say the probably 90% of the, 80 to 90% of the tournaments are not cash payout. Yeah, so yeah, same as us. We don't really have many uh, cash payouts. Yeah. I mean, if it is, it's not much, but I mean, it would be nice to get to that point one day, you know? But it's, I was saying that we should have hopefully the over the top tournament going on next year, and that's got a, I think a ten thousand dollar open yeah, prize awesome. on it. So, yeah. yeah, that's great. That'll get some that'll get some people there. That's that's a lot of that's stuff like, you know, having Ryan Bowen there and stuff like, and having his clout in the sport that he should be able to uh, help change that you know, in the future. Who, who have these guys got on the old Ryan Lachlan match? I was going to ask oh. you, man. You beat yeah. me to it. Dude, uh, I, I was going to ask you that and ask you what you think about Ryan against RVJ. I mean, aside uh, from uh, aside from Zlati, like, he beats everybody that you think he can't beat. Whether it's a lot of, t- whatever the circumstantial, whatever, I don't know. But it's like, I feel like it's Lachlan, but I just, I won't be surprised if Ryan pulls it out and somehow finds that lane that he's looking for and gets it done. But I think it's going to be yeah. a good match. It's really hard to call. Yeah, I'm the same. I I, oh, I felt Lachlan when he came over for the Ryan Scott match. Um, he pretty much flew in that day and then COVID stuffed it up and he pretty much got put into lockdown. So he flew straight oh, back home. That's but nice. while he was here, I had a quick little grip up with him and the man felt insane. Yeah. Um, he reckons he's stronger than that now. So, yeah. But then Ryan looks in pretty impressive form at the moment, too. So I, I honestly don't know. It's, it's hard because yeah, like we, we yeah. just see videos of them practicing together. You know, like it's hard when you see two practice partners because they're not, you know, it's not like they're uh, competing, you know. Yeah. No. And so, we have, yeah. we have no hands something from each other, or yeah, it's, right. And we have no hands-on data with anybody from Australia. It's not like we right. noticed somebody. Oh man, he crushed that guy that I felt. No, we don't know any. We, you know, they can smash somebody, and we don't know how strong or weak anybody is. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to call. 
He's a tough man to bet against, Ryan, isn't he? He's, he always yeah. seems to pull it out. I yeah. mean, again, I was there for when he versed Ryan Scott, and Ryan Scott's no pushover. He's an extremely hard arm wrestler to get past. Just real massive side pressure hit, super strong hand. Yeah. And we had, we had had a pretty heavy training session, well, two days before he pulled that match, and he was in. I was all banged up. I, I was. I couldn't have imagined myself pulling a comp <laughs> against anybody. Yeah, uh, my arm totally trashed. And when he sort of took the match, I was like, "Oh Jesus, there's no way he's going to be able to do this. Not in that shape." And he done it, and he done yeah. it pretty convincingly in the end. So I was like, "Oh Jesus, it's hard to bet against him." <laughs> it, it really yeah. is. Everybody that was betting against him when he came here to face uh, Chance Shaw in Florida, he he surprised everyone there too. And had and had the entire crowd against him at the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's not easy. He's got a real sticking point, eh? Sort of. I mean, we had a pretty good little practice call, and I I can kind of hold my own a bit against him um, in a hook and that. But he's just got this real sticky point where I can hold him pretty comfortably, sort of around this area. But you kind of get him to about here, and it just yeah, it's very. It's hard to get him that last inch sort of down. So yeah. And he seems like a real intelligent puller, like he'll adjust. If, and I if... think that might be his his advantage over Lachlan. I think he's definitely got a lot more ready goes on him. And I don't know, I find it hard to see Lachlan winning off of a start. I think if Lachlan wins, it's going to be him sort of catching and then basically yeah. pulling back through him. I don't know. I just you know, I find it hard to see a way where Lachlan's going to win off that go. Yeah. So... That's an exciting match. Yeah, it is. And that's the 23rd also, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Sure. Would you like that's to say something, much say something about your own uh, your own style of pulling and how, if it has uh, changed over the 10 years you've been pulling? Yeah, so it's changed a lot. Um, I used to pretty much be all inside and finish with, like, pressing. Not a flop press. I was more of a... I like my hand to be on top, pressing down. Oh, yeah. I can I can't flop press. It just feels horrible, and I don't have a lot of flexibility in my wrists. So to flop press when that pressure really gets turning my wrist up just yeah. is horrible and uncomfortable. Um, but now I almost avoid pressing at all costs. Like I don't know. I just it's become not a comfortable move for me. So I'm more of what I would probably say a high hooker now. So I like to basically have my hand still on top, but sort of stick to a more just yeah. side roll. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, so I've, that's probably where I'm at now. That, that's my ideal spot to be in a match. Like if I could get basically on top of them and just be right right there, yeah. um, I'd be happy to try to finish from that. Again, that's I've got a pretty good defensive hook still. I can be turned right over and, I can hold for quite a while. I find it hard to attack from that position. I'm not like a bloody Todd Hutchins yeah. Sort, of <laughs> yeah. sort of stuff. Like I, I can't do that. That just yeah, puts an insane amount of pressure on the elbow. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been going your route, uh, experimenting with the high hook. I'm starting to like that a lot more than trying to shoot in with a hook. Yeah, I think it's yeah great. Um, Again, I like to be in a in a deep hook too, but it's to the point now where I'd rather focus everything on my rotation. So instead of just being in that hook and then just trying to go sideways, I focus yeah. so much more now on on basically bringing my hand or my wrist back out more than pinning. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather work and get in that back before right. I even try to pin. So, but my biggest problem is just lack of comp time. I just haven't had enough exposure to proper ready goes and yeah i'm a such a different practice puller to a comp puller I, my mind still bloody just turns to rubbish when i'm in a proper comp and oh me too i just get the basics and yeah it's frustrating I, for some reason because of practice like even in a competition i always let the other person hit into me and try to catch them which i should not do and then i end up screwing myself pretty much every time it's, it's just like it's like a bad habit of like at practice i just always let people hit into me catch them and try to work my way back 
And I find myself doing that in competitions, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> you end up in a grinder, and you're like, oh, I'm yeah. stuffed after the biggest match. Yeah, and it's hard to train yourself to, like, ready go and actually hit, you know? But Especially, I mean, again, probably even more for me, because most of the time I'm doing the WA comps, and it's guys I train with that I know I don't really have any problems with. So you kind of go in a bit half ass knowing that, yeah, it would, it's something crazy for you to stuff up for them to get a win on you. So you kind of just, uh, yeah, uh, right, right, yeah. <laughs> and then you go to the, all of a sudden versus someone who you're not comfortable against, and you get smashed off the start, and yeah, it's right. Yeah, frustrating. Are you in a physical occupation that complements your uh, strength training, or is it uh, more of a, you know, you get your strength training, you know, in the gym and on the table, but. Uh, you know, hide behind a desk most of the time. No, so I repair damaged cars. So I've done that for the last 14 years, 15 there years almost. Yeah. Uh, so I'm always, I always had hammers and yeah, ratchets and yeah, I've, yeah, I've always helps. been. So it, it, I mean, everybody's the same when they're usually good at arm wrestling. I was always good at arm wrestling at school as well, pretty much unbeaten. Used to beat the teachers, everything. Nice. Um, and yeah, it kind of just, I think a lot of people sort of are like that, aren't they? And then all of a sudden they rock up to, I mean, I went to my first comp and I don't know, you know, Phil Rasmussen, the president of the AAF over yeah. here. Yeah. Um, he came over to WA for the first comp I was ever in. So I went through my weight class pretty comfortable, went into the overalls and he just obliterated me. And I was <laughs> like, what the hell is this? Like, <laughs> just, just, yeah, just flat out top rolled me. And I was like, what the hell is this stuff? Like, this guy's not going sideways. <laughs> Did that motivate you to like train or learn more? Um, well, actually, that, that same comp, I then versed the heavyweight guy who won that day. And uh, again, he destroyed me. And my arm was out of commission for about eight months. Like I couldn't <laughs> hold a hammer. Like it was really, really messed up. And Oh, my God. And yeah, after that, it kind of came good and I... I hooked up with the local club that sort of formed after that comp. And at the time it was only, it was only us, I think four guys in it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, pretty much four of us. Again, we had no idea what we were doing, just bashing sideways, going home, struggling to hold the steering wheel on your car. And right. we done that for, for yeah, two, yeah. three years before we kind of figured out what we should be doing. And yeah, it's. So you really dove into a competition before really doing that much practicing then. Yeah, no, it's just pub arm wrestling for me. So just mates and at parties and pubs. And yeah. I didn't even sign up for it. My mates pushed me into it because they just obviously, no, none of them could beat me. So they're like, oh, you have to do it. Like, yeah. you'll win easy. And um, that's I awesome. Like, oh, I at the time, I was that guy who's like, no, nah, what the hell? Arm wrestling's not a real sport. Like, <laughs> right. I mean, it's just yeah. something you do at the pub. But um, yeah, I okay. entered it and I had fun. and pretty much that's you know just loved it ever since so now once you discovered that it was a real thing and started watching like youtube did you have some favorite guys that you watched on youtube uh that inspired you or were your go-to um, videos i think everybody starts with putting john don't they right, right. <laughs> yeah that was pretty much my first sort of <laughs> thing i think i ever watched was paul john um yeah Obviously, I love watching like Giannis as well. He's great to watch. Just so technical. Um, but yeah, pretty much from pulling John. I think I watched that documentary when I started probably four or five times in the first sort of year. So just did you watch that, that after Over the Top? <laughs> so um, Over the Top, the Sylvester the movie. Stone, yeah. yeah, this is the movie. <laughs> yeah, so I've, only, I've probably only ever watched that. Well, I think probably two or three times i mean right it's yeah it's a cool movie because it's got arm wrestling it's in it unrealistic and, um, though yeah, <laughs> yeah it's so Once unrealistic, twice is enough so. i'm with you you would have think that brzink being involved in that movie would have told them like no 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 this is how you have to do this but yeah, i guess yeah, for yeah. for video you you know for a movie you have to ham it up i guess yeah <laughs> that's great well, I, took all, I took all sorts of crap because i was pulling probably a year or two before I saw the movie and people kept nagging me. Okay, fine. I'll, I finally sat down and watched it. Well, you're the oldest. 
Oh, over the top. Pulling John or over the top? Over the top. Oh, yeah. Have you pulled Jake Ward? No. So, again, sort of since he's popped up and become a YouTube star, I suppose, yeah. he's getting, getting out there. Um, yeah, it's pretty much COVID's been around. So yeah. I haven't left my state in the last almost, what, what probably two years at least. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, apart from Ryan, obviously Lachlan coming over here for the Ryan Scott match, I haven't had a chance to really do anything with anybody outside of WA. Yeah. When, it's funny when we interviewed Jake, I sent a message to his wife in advance and asked her for some inside information and any stories, and she gave me like a list of things. So halfway halfway through the interview, Jake's like, where the hell are you finding out all of this? Like, he had no idea. Like, it was all stories that were not, like, public knowledge. And he, he I, I finally told him, and he was like, oh, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny, though. Could have been, I've just been stalking you for the last <laughs> right, two years. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> then I'm like, man, is he going to be mad that I messaged his wife? <laughs> you know? But uh, she was really nice about it and gave us all kinds of information. Funny stories, all kinds of stuff. You did that so, with Paul Lynn, too, didn't you? I did that to Paul Lynn, too, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> his, his wife sent me, like, embarrassing videos, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> it's funny that the wives are so willing to uh, stick it to their husbands in an interview. <laughs> But mom, mom would probably do the same thing. Yeah, I'm so. sure. I'm sure most wives would gladly, gladly do that. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, if, if we can promote your handle in any way for you, and you know, we'll put a link down under the video, and you know, whatever we can do, uh, we'll you know, try to help you sell some here in the states or whatever. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. Like I said, <clears throat> I'd be pretty happy to box up a whole bunch for you at some point and you can sort of just give them away at some comp that you do or something just yeah that'd be cool, cool. we got a our big well our big one is march 12th of 2022 um oh, maybe I can get that one then we're trying to get like some big names to come so hopefully uh we have some things in the works with you know some some large names in the sport but until we get confirmation, we can't really say, you know. Yeah, to it. But yeah, that'd be cool. Cause you you know, we could uh we could do a yeah, raffle. Might be open by then. I might be able to make an appearance. Yeah, maybe you, yeah, maybe you can come. <laughs> you can so give a hand pull from outside of America in it. Absolutely. It's funny because like sometimes random people show up that you wouldn't think would come to like a little local tournament, but because of you know there being so many big names in our area like sometimes people just randomly come to our tournament you know but we've just, just like or something like we flew out and paid for the hotel for like uh paul passmore and jordan sill to come up and arm wrestle like some of our local guys that are up and coming so that's kind of what we try to do at, at all our tournaments is try to get like one big name to come for a super match and then, uh, you know, but That's it's, fun. it's fun. We're, we're new to it. So we're still learning, you know, but it's like our, our first thing. tournament was, you know, we didn't really know what we were doing, but we, what do we have? 87 people show up. Which, 87 people, 179 entries. As I yeah, for our first like little local <laughs> tournament. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. That, that would be like a massive tournament over here. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> Especially in WA, yeah, yeah. huge. But we had a we had a three way match between uh, Paul Douglas Passmore, Mike Aiello, and Brandon Elsesser, and it was it was pretty cool. It was a cool, cool uh, three way match there. Mike seems like he'd be a pretty fun dude, eh? Aiello, yeah, dude, he's so yeah. funny. He's hilarious. Like he's he's a big, scary looking guy, but in person, he's like the nicest. Like he like. He was at a, a tournament I went to a couple of weeks back, and uh, I have a match coming up with Gary Roberts. Like a, it's a joke match, just like a like a funny super match. And uh, 
I asked him if he'd make a video with me of me smashing him so that I could send it to Gary and be like, you're next. And he totally just let me beat him and gripped up with me and let me make a funny video. And uh, I sent it to Gary and I was like, thanks, man. But, you know, he's he's always willing to do stuff like that. Like He's just super nice guy. Seems to be a common thing with the arm wrestling community, doesn't it? They're all everybody. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's not a whole lot of assholes in the sport. And when they're when someone is an asshole, everybody knows that that guy's an asshole. So it's like. You just expect that guy to be an asshole because there's not that many that are. Most people are super supportive and want to see the sport grow and are willing to help yeah. out. Yeah, when I first met RBK about three years ago, he mentioned that he said of all the thousands of people I met, I could you know, count the idiots in one hand. And we've said, well, maybe by now we're up to two hands, but uh, still it is a relatively uh, small number of people that you have yeah. to uh, work around. Now, say COVID just stopped tomorrow, we could get you over here to the States. Is there anyone that you would like to pull Ooh. in a super match? You got some names on a list somewhere? <laughs> um, yeah, there's probably a few. I mean, I would, still, I would love to pull guys like Alan Fisher and that. Just He's such a such obviously a big name and yeah. been around for so long. Yeah, he just had a good day too. Yeah, even yeah. I mean, I'd love to feel Tony Katowski. Um, yeah. Yeah, and he's probably similar sort of weight to me. Um, I don't know what I'd have for him, but I'd lo- love to just feel him, see yeah. what it's, see what's going on there. So that's awesome. That's, that's probably yeah. So many guys I'd just love to group up with, even if it wasn't for a super match. Just right. Yeah, just to feel, feel right. Well, when Ryan Bowen gets a private jet down the road, you guys can all come over together. <laughs> he can just pick you all up and just head when, when over. When he gets here. to that million subs, I yeah, right, dude, he's well on the way, man. He's doing pretty good. Isn't he? Yeah, good for him. But yeah, well, thanks for coming on. Um, is there is there do you have a website that we could uh, shout out to everybody or? Yeah, so it's just obviously the grip, grip N, N, rip handles um, dot company dot site. I haven't finalized all the dot com dot au stuff yet. So, yeah. or can people reach out to you on Facebook too? Yeah, I mean, Instagram is probably the better spot. Instagram? Okay. I probably, I try to do more of the arm wrestling stuff with my Instagram and sort of leave Facebook to the family stuff and things like that. Yeah. But there's also, a, Grip and Rip Facebook page. So again, it's just the Grip and Rip. Um, yeah. Appreciate cool. I'll but put yeah, a link. There. I think I'm pretty much sold out of the ones I've got at the moment. I think there might be one left, but I should have another. I think I've got another batch coming in the next sort of week or two. Um, yeah. Cool. I'll put a link to your uh, Instagram under this too, then. That way, uh, people can find that. But, um, but yeah, awesome. Thanks, thanks for uh, giving us your time. Percent shirt. I think it's on its way. So sweet. Yeah. I know it's probably a slow, a slow process because we just we're looking at we're sending one to Jake Ward, and uh, what was the shipping on that, Dave? Uh, They didn't have first class international. It was priority. Express for 96 bucks and change. It was like $96 and for a shirt that's worth like a quarter of that. Yeah, that's the same thing. The the shipping just had. So I was like, when I first done an estimate for it, I was like, God damn, the shipping's almost more than the handle. I was like, I know that's that's got to be a factor when uh, I I did find because I I recently sent three to the same guy in the UK. So he um, got. Obviously, him and a couple of his mates wanted them. Yeah. So they brought it at the same time. And the shipping after one doesn't change a lot. So, oh, nice. again, if somebody wanted, knew you had a few guys in your club that wanted one. If you order them at the same time, you might only end up paying $20 for shipping. Right. Because the shipping doesn't change a lot. So it's basically, yeah, it starts off at a price and then it only goes up sort of $5 
after that. So yeah. cool. you can order five and, and it will cost you, I think one's about $50 or sub $50 Australian. Yeah. Um, but then if you ordered five of them, shipping might only be $80 Australian. So right. divided by people, shipping yeah. all of a sudden be pretty, pretty good. So yeah. Where's the hustle for us, Brian? We can buy up a bunch of handles and sell them here, you know, and <laughs> yeah, sell them. Yeah. Pitch the no we can, shipping deal. We can be your middleman. You ship us a bunch of them, and when people order them, we'll just ship it for you. <laughs> well, it's obviously probably not a bad idea because um, I think that's one big thing that's sort of stopping from some people from probably wanting it is just the fact that shipping is so expensive. So yeah. I can just ship your boxes of bloody 20 of them over and yeah. shipping only cost me bloody $10 each hand or something. So. Right. Yeah, probably here. Yeah. That's, a, I mean, that's the problem with our shirts too. When people want them international, I'm like, who wants to pay three times shipping for a t-shirt? You know, like it sucks for, you know, but. I see a t-shirt. I mean, what does a t-shirt just go in a little tiny bag? Like it's right. not like you would think, a yeah. box. You not would like think it'd be cheap, but. I guess, you know, it's got to go on some shipping container, <laughs> you know, or, or some airplane or something to get over there. And I think and all COVID that. as well is making that higher, isn't it? I think all, oh, the, yeah. airfare, all the airlines are charging more and yeah, probably doesn't help. No. Well, hopefully that'll be over someday. Jesus. I don't know what's going to happen here. Like... If they start mandating people to get vaccines or wear masks and stuff, I think. But uh, well, you don't have that already. We're, we've already no. like got certain um, jobs. If they don't have the vaccine, they basically get fired. Well, that's oh, we have that that's here. starting to happen starting, here. Yeah. yeah, and some some people are refusing. You know, I don't know what's going to happen because you guys don't have guns there. We do. So you never right. know. You never know we'll what's going to happen there. Pitchforks and, uh, <laughs> pitchforks and knives or something. No. Yeah. <laughs> hey, whatever. You train all the poisonous animals there. <clears throat> whatever works, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah, just start chucking snakes out of my. We'll all just become snake hangers <laughs> and just all <laughs> the deadly snakes around. I know. You guys have the most deadly snakes in the world, don't you, on, on the island um yeah probably i mean i grew up in the middle of nowhere so i've seen a lot of snakes and spiders and all those goodies i yeah. hate spiders but i um, i absolutely hate spiders i don't mind snakes but i'm not a spider lover yeah i think i can deal with a snake better than a spider because a snake if you had to kill it you can see it it's bigger a spider can get in places and, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to fuck. Big spiders out here. Oh. Big dinner plate spiders. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, that, that's even scarier. Like, it's like you, something out of Aliens, eye. <laughs> you got to run up and punt it. <laughs> you know, like, what do no, you do with that? <laughs> if you can kick... A spider and it still lives and keeps coming at you you know you're in trouble <laughs> but yeah well we, listen thank you for your time because i know it, you know with the time difference it's hard to get it's try, hard to get australians on here because we ran into that with with jake too so we we try to plan anybody from australia like on a friday or saturday so that uh you know it's it's the weekend there because it's hard during the week with people working and stuff like that. So. Oh, yeah. I'll, um, I'll try to just pop in on some of the Friday ones every now and again. So yeah, I... feel free. Yeah, Jake Jake jumps on sometimes to say hi and stuff. And, you know, he's he's fun to have on. And, we I mean, there's some nights where, you know, we have like 15, 20 people on here from all over the United States coming on, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, you know, we just open it up. We don't record or go live. We just open it up and – people are on here just talking about what's going on in their area and sometimes it's about arm wrestling sometimes it gets crazy and we have, we have to shut it down <laughs> you never you never know what topics might come up with a bunch of uh, arm wrestlers but yeah we often do get on what what would be like 8 30 saturday morning your time and then we're on till you know well into the afternoon your time I yeah. uh, can believe how long we can uh, go on with some of these things. So, uh, uh, 
sometimes we're oh, yeah. you know going there's, for there's there's been nights where we went on at 8 30 and we're on till 2 a.m <laughs> with the people all over because people wow. from like california are like a few hours behind us so they start coming on at like midnight and we're you know so then we stay on a couple more hours with them and we end up being on for like fucking eight hours. You know? <laughs> like, that's a cool the same show, night. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it really. I don't know if it was the same night, but we had that uh, gent on from Bulgaria who was basically the crack of dawn in Bulgaria. I think they were yeah. like six hours ahead of us. Yeah. Well, that, that but it's, been... it's fun when Jake comes oh, on because Jake like takes over the whole podcast you know what i mean like he goes <laughs> interviewing the, people yeah he just starts interviewing people and like uh, like we don't have to say a word we can sit back and like relax for a minute and jake just does his thing and you know he starts, he starts playing pin lose cancel yeah he just he <laughs> interviews everybody and asks them all these questions i'm like oh this is great <laughs> yeah, he's fun. yeah he's fun hopefully his That's channel fun. blows up it's getting bigger, isn't it? He's yeah. Growing. Yeah, for sure. Plus, he's starting nice to be. To pick up at a comp one day, like commentating together. Yeah, that would be awesome. When he can, he can ready bang live. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, hopefully his uh, channel blows up like uh, Ryan Bowen's. Yeah. We only have three followers, so only three people are going to see this. <laughs> Now we got a couple hundred, but it's more people. More people come on our Zoom and like know us from our Facebook group more so than our YouTube channel. So, yeah. um, I subscribed to the YouTube channel a while ago now. So, yeah, we gotta. We're trying to up our game on our content and try to have something out every week, but it's it's hard That's to like be, keep up. You know, we to try to be consistent. Eh? Like I would love to just share. Yeah, do one or two videos a week and yeah yeah get some, you don't want your content to be super boring either so right yeah i mean we we're trying to like interview different people and we interview a lot of local guys too but it's hard to like if we if we interview someone who's not well known in the sport other people don't want to watch it you know what i mean but because of what we're trying to do as like the 98% you know, we want everyone to feel equal and, you know, part of the part of the group. So we don't want to exclude people. But again, for a podcast, it's hard if you're interviewing that someone that absolutely is not known to anybody else, then people just don't watch it. And I, I kind of feel bad for the people when they have like zero views or, you know, but hopefully that'll change and we can get some of these. Yeah guys because a lot of these guys are strong as hell just no one knows them yet you know yeah. so uh, we're you, we're helping them get out there if we can so that they are well known we'll but, start click baiting their titles up like what yeah. the hell is this handle used for right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just show the people looking at this one some dude bending over in the background or something and... we'll just yeah. we'll we just show like thing. we're just gonna show like the thumb <laughs> and me like, <laughs> me like showing that it bends <laughs> <laughs> comes with lube <laughs> yeah. yeah just the put, put bends, the hand, but will the holding a bottle of lube or something yeah, right like, that's hey, perfect clickbait <laughs> let's make this thing up man let's get some views yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah we appreciate your time and uh hopefully i'll edit this probably tonight or tomorrow morning and we'll have it out and uh i'll send you the link to it That's and crazy. uh yeah um, but uh yeah, here i'm yeah, gonna thanks yeah Good thank time. you